Welcome back. The housing market slowdown hasn't stopped techies from trying to figure out how to make the process of buying and selling a home a lot easier. In a new report, City looks at prop tech and how it's being developed to create a frictionless housing market. Roger Ash Ashworth is the head of City's research, non-agency MBS strategy team and helped compile the report. Roger, good to see you here. Talk us through what is prop tech and, and what are some of the companies out there working on right now? Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate uh, this. This report is something we put out as part of a series uh, we're focusing on the housing market. It's called Home of the Future. Chapter one was looking at net carbon emissions, you know, net zero carbon reduction in the housing market. Chapter two, like you said, focused on fintech and companies looking to streamline various forms of the housing market and all sorts of transactions in and around it. Uh, you know, some of the some of the interesting parts of the report that we talked about. We talked about. A mortgage underwriting, which you don't really think about as a headline grabber, but there's a lot of process that happens in and around lending and mortgage lending, looking at borrowers' incomes, documentation, verification, and all sorts of other aspects of that whole process of enabling a borrower to get a loan to go buy a house. Other aspects of more headline grabbing, uh, companies that are providing instant offers on homes. When you think about you know moving from one home to another, you have to sell one home. It's an emotional process. It's a lot of friction involved. And then you have to go buy another one. This is your companies out there looking to streamline that process by providing an instant offer to your home. If you think about all the information that's happened over the information democratization that's kind of happened over the past you know, decade or so, it's one of the spaces where um, kind of technology is finally getting to the point where there's enough information out there and it able to uh, help streamline the process in a whole bunch of different ways with property information and transaction data. We're seeing the number of bids per home that's lower right now, and it's been decreasing with the mortgage rates rising in this period of time. You know, how is that impacting where you're seeing the number of interested buyers and at what price they're still staying involved in the bidding process? That's true. You know, if they look at like a lot of these publicly traded companies that do provide the instant offers on uh, potential home sellers. Uh, certainly they're providing, you know, upwards of, you know, some publicly traded ones are advertising they're putting out 2 million offers, but their only hit rate is actually quite lo much lower than that. Mm. Uh, and it's like you said, existing home sales are starting to pull back. The affordability concern in and around the housing market is certainly something I keep track of as a, as a research analyst looking forward to uh, projecting home prices because we're always worried about potential defaults and losses at some point in the future. But um, it's certainly something that, you know, we project out forward. If you look at consensus estimates of existing home sales, we're talking, you know, in the neighborhood of 5 million homes per year. So certainly there's uh, some market share to be grabbed uh, and help streamline the, the whole process there. What are some some of the companies, Roger, doing this uh, very well and maybe some others not doing it well? Uh, you know, I, I don't have any disclosures. I have to, I have to apologize there to uh, talk names, but we certainly follow along with research reports where we do talk names. Um, but yeah, there's certainly businesses that have uh, succeeded and some that have uh, pulled back in the industry. It's, um, it's certainly, uh, when you talk about the, the home buying transaction, these are, large, these are large transaction amounts. It's probably, as a US consumer, the largest financial transaction you ever undertake in your life. The, um, and you know, the potential for error and missing is certainly there in business decisions. You know, but on a go forward basis, you know, we've already had a couple of public companies report profitable quarters in Q1, and it seems like the, 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 the potential growth path is certainly uh, large when you talk about the US housing market. I think it's like a $37 trillion market. There's $26 trillion of equity. There's a lot of actually other investment business models where uh, companies are willing to, uh, instead of taking out a second mortgage, they'll simply purchase a piece of equity of your home for a share of that home price appreciation going forward. There's a lot of uh, potential market share across the board and a lot of frictions that can be removed uh, in the underwriting process and the real estate transaction process. The housing market's become a little more uh, volatile, to say the least, Roger, uh, as you know, with rates going up. Has that slowed the pace of innovation in, in, in an industry like this? You know, we haven't seen too much of it yet. You know, the, the uh, historically speaking, it's been a high friction process market. Um, but, you know, the, again, these companies are all starting off from relatively small sizes. You know, I think the innovations really have started happening since 2015. Uh, so the past like five, six years, the potential growth for market share or in tech terms, you know, total addressable market, it's quite significant even when we talk about things like mortgage underwriting and we're talking about, you know, the cost of a mortgage to be originated is somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to $10,000. If you can, if you can shave off, you know, one or $2,000 of cost and help share and share some of that with the consumer 
and provide a better consumer experience, whether that be through apps and streamlined speed to underwrite and get people that the money they need to buy a home. Because if, if, as we all know, the, there's limited, limited supply of housing on the market for sale, historically low levels and days on market, uh, days to sell a home. Well, granted, like you said, we, we might see demand for housing pull back a little bit. Uh, still, the days on market is relatively compressed. And anything you can do to streamline that process is certainly appreciated. Roger, I understand that you ask, you also track some of the sales that are in the metaverse for real estate that is of a more digital nature here. But with the pullback that we've seen, perhaps this crypto winter, and even for a more protracted period of time, how has that impacted some of the people even willing to buy in a virtual reality for for the meta me, if you will, to be able to live when when I can't even buy a home in the real life right now. <laughs> yeah, the, certainly that's been one of the parts of the report we we, we discussed a lot and we debated actually putting into the into the, this at, at all. But um, you know, it's something that again we take these 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 GPS reports, so it stands for Global Perspectives and Solutions, and we get a chance to step back from our day to day investment recommendations and really just highlight some of the broad big picture issues facing the U.S. economy or the global economy for that matter, and the average consumer. Um, it's uh, we just highlight these trends that are happening. Uh, try not to take too much of a stance on the metaverse, uh, as you say. But yeah, there's other uh, interesting uh, aspects of various mortgage lenders looking to. Um, help people monetize that cryptocurrency. In other words, they can, uh, doubt, you can basically ring fence a piece of your crypto holdings and use it to uh, go purchase a home as an effective down payment with a, with a mortgage on the other side as well.